Good morning and welcome back to the live broadcast at Cisco Live Melbourne. We're continuing the deep dive discussions and the next topic that we're going to cover is multi-cloud. With me in the studio, I'm very pleased to have Carlos Pereira. Carlos is an old friend and a distinguished systems engineer in the sales organization. Carlos, welcome to the broadcast. Thanks, Raymond. The old friend it was a good call. <laughs> um, Carlos, it's great to have you on the live broadcast, but also we really value the fact that you do come down to Australia yes. to meet and spend time with our customers and partners. Always great to have you in country and uh, awesome experience. It's been my seventh year already. Yeah, that's, a, that's been a long time. So if we look at multi-cloud, we live in a multi-cloud world where yes. using multiple clouds from multiple providers has become the new normal. But multi-cloud is not easy. Organizations are challenged to deal with a fragmented nature, increasing complexity, and the lack of control when it comes to data, policy, and security. With that said, what is our customer journey to multi-cloud, Carlos? So you, you said it right, Raymond. So first of all, I, I really appreciate the welcome every time I come in country. The, the, the place is awesome, the customers are amazing. So to come to your question, the customers are indeed on a journey, and that's the key word. And a journey is not like you're gonna pack your stuff, put on a truck, drive to the other side of the city, and then you move to the club. Correct. There is a lot of process that goes with that, and that relates to people and skills as well. So when we go back like five years ago, there was a demand to go to cloud because agility was the main request. They want to have something available that back in the day we didn't have the technology or the skill sets on the IT teams to provide. So public clouds were more infrastructure as a services back in the day. When you fast forward to today, there are multiple services that are offering by public clouds like Amazon's and Azure's and Google's become the ones that are come higher on the Western. Here on, on Asia, you have the Alibaba's and the Tencent's and Baidu's as well. On any one that you pick, services are available, but at the same time, the customers have options to run the similar technologies on premises. Okay. So it becomes much more now what a rationalization, what services make sense where, and what is the final cost that I can provide. So it is a journey on that regard, and Cisco has been building technology and process to help the customers towards that journey. That's pretty much how the customers are facing. Here's another aspect to keep in mind. As public clouds become bigger, the customers are now concerned to have everything on a single cloud because they become a powerhouse that can control your destiny. So right. there is putting where make more sense on the services. If the customer has Office 365 with Microsoft, they may have some associated service with Azure, machine learning at Google, regular like Lambda services on Amazon, and so on and so forth. So you, you get the point. There is data sovereignty, data retention, some of process on intellectual property that are forced to run on premises. So that is why it is a journey that's pretty much hot and happening everywhere. Excellent. And, and it's interesting that you mention that it's a journey. Um, it makes me think of the comment that David Geckler ma made not too long ago of, we're not moving to the cloud, we're expanding to the cloud. Yes. Um, so that's, I think, very, very valid, and it brings it to the conversation of the multiple clouds where we yes. want to um, uh, store our data and, and use. Um, so what is the Cisco multi-cloud strategy then? So, so that's a question that I typically get, regardless where you go. So the multi-cloud strategy from Cisco is very simple. It is all about multiple clouds. And there are two reasons for that. The first one is Cisco is not itself a cloud provider. So we are not Amazon or Azure's or Google's or Alibaba's of the world in a sense that I provide shared infrastructure that any customer can, can buy and build their own workloads on top. We don't. So our multi-cloud strategy is predicated on the fact that the world is multi-cloud and there is a need for operational consistency and easy across those dispersed mm -hmm. and heterogeneous environments. And there are three big pillars that are foundational to our strategy. One is everybody needs to connect 
to multiple clouds. So you would expect that Cisco would bring something on connectivity and networking given the, the DNA of the company. Very so true. connectivity to multiple clouds is an area of investments and, mm -hmm. and solutions from Cisco. Another one that's key and important is security. So mm -hmm. all the case that goes to protect not only the connectivity, but mainly the workloads running across multiple clouds and the data. So the whole aspect of protection and security is another pillar. And the third one has to do with consumption. So the multi-cloud strategy for Cisco has to do with multiple clouds, pivot on those three big pillars. Connectivity, how you connect, how you protect when it rolls across, and by the time that you have it there, how you consume it consistently across. With a big lens on operationals, not necessarily only on deployment. The life cycle is important. Okay, so to summarize, connect, protect, and consume. Pretty much. Is, is key factors to, to keep in, in mind through the On process. On our strategy, indeed. Exactly. Um, changing gears a little bit and moving on to execution deliverables to implement the strategy. What does Cisco have to offer in this space? That's a very good question. So if I, if I talk with a customer today that asks me that question, okay, Cisco, you are a multi-cloud strategy, you're not a cloud provider yourself, well, we are in the sense that we have WebEx for collaboration services and security services that we offer on SaaS, but I, I do not have servers or infrastructure that you run your own workload on my info like Amazon or, or Google has. If you go to the connectivity protection and consumption, so on the connectivity we have offers like ACI or a marquee network for data center being now extended, seamless, and automated to AWS and Azure so far. Okay. We announced that in Cisco Live Barcelona, we are demoing this here in Melbourne, the extension for AWS and Azure, fully automated, the same networking policy and constructs that you have on your own data centers mm -hmm. can now be expanded and extended to those public clouds, which means that from an operations standpoint for the day two life cycle of the solution, we make it easy, seamless, and automated. So another aspect has to do with still on the net connectivity when you have branches in the cloud with the SD1 solution with the Viptela mm -hmm. that becomes part of our DNA architecture. That's yet another reach to bridge to the cloud, if you will. Okay. On the protection side, which would be the second pillar, we have solutions like titration cloud workload protection okay. that works seamless on premises and all those clouds to protect the workload, the application that the customer runs at the same time. You have a specific solutions like StealthWatch Cloud that protect Lambda services yeah. on functions on those cloud providers. And last but not least, on the consumption pillar, there are mainly two areas that we are investing heavily. One is on management, which is the new cloud center suite, which are also demonstrating here on Melbourne and Cisco Live and available for people to play and the visibility at the application levels with AppDynamics, which by definition is multi-cloud, no matter where it runs. So you have full visibility and then the associated analytics, so you know which cloud is performing better, which applications make more sense. And if you look at this, we have offers across the board on all those three pillars that goes from your premises environment to multiple clouds. And even if you don't have an, any data center by yourself, we still run multi-cloud alone and offer this value to you. Excellent. Yeah, and it's, it's great to see that we can actually engage and provide an offer across the, the connect, the protect, and the consume side. So thank yes. you for that. Um, a couple of final comments and recommendations that you can provide to our customers as they embark on this cloud journey. I, I, would, I would use that last question that you're asking me on some recommendations and actually not only provide recommendations if you allow me but sharing some experience on what I just said before. Okay. For instance, if you look at the customers and you ask them what is the main big challenge that they have with the clouds or multiple clouds, the answers that you're going to hear pretty much are the reasoning that built our strategy in the first place. So if you ask a question to a customer, they say, well, connecting to multiple cloud is really hard. It's not something trivial. You have crypto credentials. You have different tool sets on every cloud. That's why we took very seriously to expand from the data center to the cloud and from the branches and campus to the cloud on the concept of cloud edges and ACI anywhere to basically make sure that connectivity is a problem that gets solved. Correct. It's, it's not as trivial as it looks like. 
and the customer can connect directly, can connect over VPNs, can connect over the internet. So this is a big issue that the customers ask us to, to, to figure. So my first recommendation is, when you look at this connectivity, there are two aspects of connectivity. First, actually make sure that go to point A to point B, the connectivity itself, and the policy that defines that. Okay. If you think about them, Cisco is providing connectivity to all the points, but is kind of normalizing the operations of, of the policy, yeah. so your consistency brings less operational risk and cost to you. Got so it. that's a typical recommendation that we ask the customers to dissociate one another. Yeah. The second one has to do with security. Okay. As I mentioned before, we have a plethora of, of offerings from today. Okay. The, the big thing that we are seeing is that there are four types of security when you go to multiple clouds and you need to get them very clearly. When you access the stuff that comes from the cloud, like you have an application running there, you, you download it, you consume, but there are situations that you go to the cloud, mm -hmm. if you have SaaS is different then you're pushing stuff to the cloud. So the security is both ways, and we have security for the workload and application. Those are all deployment based. As it comes to the operations of the life cycle, because the connectivity and the security are the final ones, and mm -hmm. then someone you need to operate that. Then you need visibility across this. Okay. Because every cloud, including the private environment, has their own tool sets. And you end up with like, you had a problem of complex on your own data center. Now you now have five clouds, your problem becomes yeah, exponentially bigger. Exactly. So we are normalizing this with visibility for app dynamics, as I mentioned to you, that does go and provide multi-cloud visibility from the application itself. Mm -hmm. So if the application needs to run on a public cloud for a scaling standpoint, or needs to run on an on-premises environment for a regulation on a particular country standpoint, it doesn't matter. And app dynamics gives you the visibility up to the point of running your application on a mobile phone of mm -hmm. someone. Yeah. So you can have end-to-end -end visibility for the end user, okay. which matches with the security that we said before to authenticate that particular person, and then go all the way to where the application is running, which doesn't matter really for the end user. It can yeah. be running on a public cloud, can be running anywhere. So that operational consistency that we are trying to bring on the consumption for a visibility and management standpoint yeah. is key to reduce operational costs, to reduce complexity, and reduce risk in the end of the day. Correct. So that would be my recommendation. Look at the pillars, not because Cisco is trying to push a product and organically make it multi-cloud. It has to do with when you bootstrap and deploy, and then on the life cycle of that solution, mm -hmm. which is differently than what used it to be when you buy a network equipment for your premises environment that basically goes out of your book in five years. A multi-cloud service is a cloud service you can spend a day or a month with you and just you change. Exactly. So the life cycle logic is different, mm -hmm. which means that operations needs to adapt, yeah. and we are bringing solutions to make this more seamless. Mm -hmm. My last recommendation on your last question would be, everybody talks about technology here. Mm -hmm. Multi-cloud journey is a people experience an evolution too. So a lot of customers, when they go to the cloud, they look at the people that has been serving them for 20 years, and instead of making them part of the solution, they become part of the problem. Exactly. So they are the yeah. old guys, you're not yeah. seeing what's going on. My suggestion, and I've seen many organizations that has been successful in adopting this, they make these people part of the solution and not the old legacy part of the problem. You create an inclusive environment and you grow the skill sets on everybody mm -hmm. and that makes motivational and the multi-cloud journey is something that the companies embrace. Awesome, and, and I think the last part that you mentioned is very valid and true, is we've got to focus not just on the technology but also on the people. Yeah, and indeed. if we go back to the multi-cloud conversation, connect, protect and consume. If yes. I can remember correctly all the points you that did. you gave me. You did. Perfect. Carlos, again, thank you for the time. It, it was a pleasure hosting you on the live broadcast. Um, I know you've got a presentation coming up directly after the keynote. Yes. Um, I would encourage all the delegates on site that are listening to the live broadcast, make some time to go and attend it. I think it'll be an amazing opportunity to get the, the, the most current and up-to-date information from Carlos. Um, for those of you on the live broadcast, thank you for tuning in. 
Um, Carlos's presentation that he's delivering after the keynote will be available on the Cisco Live on demand platform around about the 19th of March, and you're welcome to consume that um, at your leisure. We are going to cross over to the keynote, and I would like to hand the baton to Miyuki Suzuki, um, who would be the host for the keynote session that's going to take place now. Thank you, and we'll speak to you again later.